All right, Andy, where are you out of? Ohio? Yep, I'm Southern Ohio, not too far from, um, about 30 minutes from Cincinnati. All right, the Ohio State, awesome. Yes, sir. Cool. Awesome, all right. Welcome everybody, I'm Adam Kaplan. Um, I have um, Andy here, and um, I'm gonna go through some uh, cool information on a product for you and uh ask any questions uh in the chat we'll have we'll send it over to him i'm gonna let him go through the presentation um afterwards we're gonna discuss um some dcc stand stuff um and uh grab your lunch and uh sit back and have fun all right cool it's all yours Absolutely. Thanks, Adam. Uh, before I kind of get the presentation, everything pulled up, just first wanted to kind of start by thanking uh, DCC Supply, Adam and his entire team, Leslie and, her, and, the, and the marketing team. Um, they've done a fantastic job working behind the scenes with us at Ingenico and in my marketing team. I, I, I see Aisha on here. I don't know if, if any of our other team members are on here, but um, they've really put a lot of work into getting this set up. I, I know it's only for me, 30 minutes around that to get to talk to you guys, which I appreciate your guys' time. I know lunchtime is normally a time to kind of decompress and, and get away from work. So the fact that we have, I think, close to 100 people on this thing is it's greatly appreciated on my end. So I wanted to thank Adam and DCC for that, as well as as, as our marketing team uh, and Genico. Um, for those of you that, that don't know me, um, my name is Andy Cook, and I am a sales slash account rep uh, with Ingenico. Uh, my primary responsibility is in the traditional indirect acquiring ISO ISV space, whatever um, these these agents like to refer to themselves nowadays, right? Uh, we deal with big indirect acquirers. We deal with smaller ISOs. Uh, we, we really deal with a large range of people in, in, in different industries, and, and DCC is one of them, right? They, traditionally may have been more of an ISO or an indirect acquirer and now they they're more of a third party trusted distribution distribution partner for us so I do on a wide range of things and I mentioned that is because over this presentation we're really going to go over a, a wide range of products um, what Ingenico has traditionally offered um, what Ingenico is going to offer in your future uh, and what you guys can expect from us uh, before I kind of get into that uh, I just wanted to reference, if I haven't had the chance to meet you yet, me and my team, I think Tim's on the call, Tim manages our indirect acquiring channel for the United States. Uh, we're at about every regional show, trade show that you can go. Uh, if you guys haven't had the chance to meet us yet, feel free to come up, introduce yourself, let us know how we could better serve you guys. As I kind of make my way through this presentation, I think you see a, a key thing that differentiates in Genico is our passion and our commitment to help service partners like DCC Supply and their partners. Um, so yeah, please feel free to come up, introduce yourselves and, and, and see how we can help. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up my presentation. If you guys can't see it here in a couple of seconds, let me know. Just wanna make sure we're off to a, off to a good start. So give me one second. Adam, Leslie, is, is this good? Can you guys all see what we what we have here? Yes. Yeah, we can. Right. Any chance you can close your shade behind you a little bit? Yeah. Right. Give me one second. Oh. Blinding us all. Ah, oh, much better. Thanks. Better. Cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> cool. So over over this presentation, guys, I, I really want to focus on on three things. Um, I know a lot of times sales reps like myself, it's very, very easy for us to to just jump into stuff and and start to show you guys what what products we have and what we want you to buy. Um, but I really wanted to start off today with who we are at Ingenico. 
Um, what makes Ingenico different um, in terms of our our internal core of, of the people? Uh, then I kind of want to transition our transition into into some products, uh, Tetra, Android, and maybe some products that you guys aren't necessarily the most familiar with, which is okay. Like I said any questions that you guys have, we're more than happy to answer them. And then finally, to answer some questions that that I think Adam and the team had kind of kind of made up, they'd sent me over some lists of questions that I think will really follow up this presentation well and, and give you guys some context. Um, so, Ingenico, who are we? Ingenico has been in for over 40 years, and we serve as the globe's largest hardware POS provider. I think that's important, right? Uh, I know there's lots of hardware providers across the globe. Um, we're not um, oblivious to the fact that we have lots of competitors and there are lots of options out there. Uh, but we've also seen in the past, um, they come and go. Uh, the fact that we've been around for 40 plus years and we're the largest in the globe, I think that speaks strongly to who we are at Ingenico and what we have to offer to our customers. At Ingenico, our mission and, and really our goal is to work with our partners to make sure um, that we're the most technology trusted partner in the globe. Uh, we can't do what we do without the input of our customers. And that's um, that's positive and negative. I'll be transparent with you. Every time I, I talk to a customer or I go over a, a new product, I always ask that my customers be 100% transparent with me. Um, the reason with that being is I can't help you guys is if I don't know what's going on. I can't tell you the amount of times I've, I've had a conversation with a customer and I've shown them a new product or, or a new solution. And uh, they said, yeah, yeah, every, everything, everything looks good. Um, we come, we come ready to development. And I, I go to that customer and ask them if they're ready to move. And they're not necessarily ready because maybe that solution didn't fit their needs. Uh, if they were able to give me some feedback at the beginning and, and we can work together in a true partner, um, one, you guys will be able to trust us more, and two, we can serve you guys better. Uh, so I always like to reference that as well. Ingenico currently is present in 37 countries. I mentioned we're a global com uh, country. I think that's that's really that's really impressive. We have we have global offices in 37 countries. We have over a thousand banks and acquirers. And through 2023, we have deployed 40 plus million terminals across the globe. So really some impressive statistics there. Now, guys, I, I mentioned this before. What, what separates Ingenico from our competition? I mentioned it before. We're not oblivious to the fact that there are a lot of competitors out there and there are a lot of competitors out there. We, we get it. Um, so I often get asked by my customers that come to me, Andy, what what makes Ingenico different? Why should I buy your box or your solution as compared to solution X, Y, or Z? Uh, my answer every single time is support, support, support. Um, at Ingenico, we provide unmatched support and we are truly here to help our customers. Uh, my goal is that if you were to go to any single one of my customers, and I, I think it would be the case with DCC apply and ask them, what's this, how's the support you get from Tim and Andy's team uh, in the indirect acquiring space? They would have nothing but positive things to say. Uh, we really focus a lot of our time and attention on making sure that you guys are all taken care of. Um, and that, that goes for all of Ingenico. I don't think I've ever worked for a company that puts as much time, money, and resources into our customer support as they do. Um, and some statistics I support that. Uh, we currently service 170 countries with 33 repair facilities around the world, repairing a, a little over 3 million terminals per year. Um, we obviously want to make sure that you guys are taken care of. It's a big thing for us. And how do we do that? Uh, I know every company has values, but do they actually live and act by them? Uh, at Ingenico, I can confidently say we do. Uh, some of our values include trust. I mentioned it before. We want you guys to trust us. Empowerment. We empower our customers and our colleagues and our coworkers to help to help us. I mentioned we we want your feedback. We want your guys' honest opinion to how we can do better. Uh, innovation, we take that feedback, uh, we take new ideas, and we try to stay ahead of the curve to make sure that you guys have the solutions that you guys need. Care, already mentioned care. We throw a ton of money, resources into support where you guys are all taken care of. Inclusion, a big one for us. We want to make sure everybody is involved in everything that we do. And then learning. Uh, we're always constantly learning. I think we all know in this business that you really have to stay ahead of the curve. Our curve, if you are with the curve, you're probably behind. 
Um, so we always have to make sure that we have the learning kind of mindset and making sure that we're staying ahead of the curve there for you all. Next, now that you guys know a little bit about Ingenico, I really wanted to kind of get into product, which is probably what you guys are, are more interested in. Uh, this includes, for the first ones, Axiom and Tetra. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, Axiom is Ingenico's Android product suite. Uh, so if you hear me use the word Axiom throughout this presentation, I specifically am referring to products that use our Android operating system, uh, where Tetra, which a lot of you are probably more familiar with, is our traditional our traditional product line. Uh, I'll mention this kind of before I start because I get this question a lot. Andy, we use a lot of Tetra today, but we've, hear, we've heard a lot about Axiom. Is, is, is Ingenico ditching Tetra? The answer is no. Tetra is not going anywhere. I shifted more kind of towards the Android mindset. Absolutely. Um, and I think that's kind of where, as we all know, the industry is going. Why is that? Um, a little bit more flexible. The technology is better. Um, gives you guys more solution options. So it's, it's just there. But no, Tetra is not going anywhere. And we'll show you kind of some product suites that we have there now. Here's a quick glimpse at our Tetra line. Um, Tetra line is really focused on serving four different kind of verticals within the space. Uh, desktop space, you guys would see these units with the Desk 3500 and Desk 5000 traditionally. Uh, mobile units, Move 5000, which is essentially the Desk 5000, but in a has a 4G, 3G kind of capability. Move companions, which are essentially card readers for, for a third-party payment um, device, the Link 2500 and Link 2500i. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with our in-lane series. These are what you'll see at enterprise-level hotels, your targets, your Home Depots, um, those places where they really need to enable HTML5 business apps or maybe create a bigger screen, a, a better fixed check experience for those high-end high, high -end retail um, level things. And then the next we'll get into self-service. Um, I'm sure as you guys know, a few years ago and probably even before that, but kind of COVID um, self and unattended really became a big thing. And Genico is very, very proud in our self series. We have everything, as you can see on the right hand side, from a self 2000 all the way down to a self 8000. Lots of different options for you guys for different varying merchants in that unattended space, whether it's vending machines, um hospital parking garages whatever you guys need um there's a different form factor for every single one um, um andy you're frozen yes he is Okay, <clears throat> hi everybody, this is Tim. Uh, let me just get my headset on here. Give me one second. Ooh, and we'll nice recovery, Tim. Well, let me go through the screen uh, while Andy gets himself unfrozen. This is a, uh, a really good shot of what, what we do today in the, in the made for purpose terminal line. So Tetra has been out, originally it was Telium 2, prior to that it was Telium, this is Telium 3 or Tetra. And as Andy explained, this uh, this uh, is our legacy line of terminals, very popular all over the world, particularly here in the U.S., and also uh, is uh, going to be a companion to Axiom. Now, it looks like we have Andy back. Andy, you're a little bit um, kludgy on the picture. You guys hear me? Maybe you want to turn your camera off. If you turn your camera off, that'll, that'll help your data speed. Let me try. Can you guys hear me now? Is it better? I can hear you, but we can't see you anymore. I mean, we can't see the presentation anymore. Yeah, that's fine. Um, can you see it now? Yes. Okay, and you can hear me yeah. now, right? Yeah, yeah. Without that, that camera eats up a lot of data. So let's try it this way. All right, cool, cool. I'll just leave the camera off for now since we're looking at the presentation. Apologize. I don't know where you guys dropped me at. Um, I'm assuming right around the self series. Is that is that correct? Well, Sorry, I muted, I muted myself. <laughs> yeah, we're just the inlane and then itself. I, I had myself on. Okay, cool. Which, so, which is very rare. So inlane, I'm like, I yeah, I apologize if if we're if I'm repeating myself, but I want to make sure you guys get all the information right. So inlane, just briefly go over it again. High end 
high volume retailers, so Heart, Targets, Home Depots, uh, something, a place where they may need the HTML5 business apps or, or a bigger screen to create a better fixed checkout experience, right? You'll see those in a lot of high end um, hotels as well. Uh, self service really took off a little bit before COVID, but definitely during COVID, uh, really specialized in a space to uh, service customers in hotel parking lots, ho hospital parking lots. Um, vending machines, places where you don't necessarily need a clerk, uh, but payments needed. Um, but guys, I, did, I I can get you guys Tetra over information, over Tetra information, but for for time purposes, I wanted to spend a lot of this time uh, going over Axiom. That's where Tim and I get a lot of questions. Uh, it's a it's a newer line. I don't like saying new because it's really now been around in the U.S. for about three years and globally for about five. Uh, but newer to it is still newer to a lot of our customers. So I wanted to make sure I gave ample time to kind of go over that. I know a lot of people are familiar with Tetra, so we'll we'll move over to that now. Uh, as I mentioned, Android is not new to Ingenico. Uh, we currently have Android Axiom lines deployed in over 40 countries. We've sold over eight million terminals, and we currently now have seven different models of Axiom payment hardware. Um, and I say seven very, very carefully because that could change tomorrow. I mentioned before, Ingenica really doesn't like sitting still. We don't like being behind the curve. So we're constantly taking advice from our customers to, to keep that product line moving forward. Axiom is a complete integrated platform that utilizes six key things. Uh, that includes smart POS, uh, payment applications, estate and security management, obviously an Android Axiom operating system uh, to speed up integrations, uh, business en enablement applications, and increased customer care. When I go over Axiom, guys, I, I really like to break it up into three different families. And, and don't feel the need to look at these devices too crazy. We'll go into each one individually. This kind of just gives a better visual. Uh, the three families I really like to break it up into is our mobile or portable family, our traditional countertop desktop family, and then our fixed multi-lane uh, tablet form factor family. Um, when I say family, I don't I don't want you to think they're different devices. Uh, they all, they're different form factors, but they all fall under, fall under that Axiom kernel. Um, so once certified, they obviously take a little bit of development work, but we certify every single, which, which a lot of our customers really love. And all these devices really pair well together to make sure that we're servicing a varying need for, for a partner, right? I know, especially with discount credit card supply, um, they're not focused on, on one vertical. A lot of our customers aren't. They want to get out there and they want to sell devices to anybody that they possibly can. Uh, for that to be the case, you guys have to have the tools to be able to service that. And I think I a really, really good job at doing that. Um, Axiom has a wide range of Android terminals um, that support in-store POS, mobility and retail, uh, on-the-go business, we mentioned in-lane, um, but self is also coming as well. I know when I spoke on Tetra, I mentioned self or unattended. In Q3 of this year, um, you guys can expect the self unattended Axiom device. Uh, what does that mean? It uh, gives you, like I said, once Axiom and Android is certified, it gives you the ability to do a little bit of development work, um, but still transfer over into that self-series. And then again, in-store tablet form factors. So now the cool part. The first device I wanted to go over with you guys today is our Axiom uh, DX8000. This is really our workhorse device, guys. Uh, really one of the first ones we came out with and. And I, it's a workhorse device for a couple of reasons, and that's because of its mainly because its flexibility. As you can see on the right hand side, and I really want you to focus on the top of it, it's a it's a tablet phone like screen with a portable printer attached to it. Uh, Android 10 uh, does come with 4G Bluetooth and Wi-Fi with a front and rear facing camera. I mentioned it's function it's functional. Um, you may say, Andy, how is it functional? Well, I have customers who use this device in a mobile environment uh, and a checkout, they take it across the store. They do the they do the checkout away from the counter. And I have customers that literally use it like a desktop device. They sit it on a counter or on a charger and they take payments there. It has the functionality to do both. Uh, with those 4G, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities, technically was it made to be in the mobile environment? Yes, but 
within a merchant, it gives you that flexibility, which I really like. Next, we'll move over to another mobile unit that is a little bit different than the one I just showed you. Uh, it, as compared to the DX8000, this is the EX8000. Um, obvious difference for you guys is it just looks like the Apple iPhone 11s that we carry around in our pocket every single day doesn't have that little bit of a bulky printer on the top. Now you may say, Andy, what's what's the difference here? Why would somebody use the DX8000 as proposed as proposed the EX8000? Um, think EX8000 in, in terms of optimal mobility, um, concerts, movie theaters. My favorite is my favorite example is sporting events. Um, imagine 75 to 100 merchants walking up and down an aisle in a sporting in a packed sporting event, and they need to they need some place to put this. That DX8000, even though it, it would work, it may be a little bit too bulky to put in their apron. It may be a little bit bulky to put in their pants. This is the same exact size as a phone we carry around in our pocket every day. Uh, one customer came to me one time with with the perfect example, and I still use it today. It's when I first started in Genico. Is he said, Andy, you're a guy. He's like, your pants are normally typically a little bit looser. You could probably fit that DX8000 in your pocket. He's like, if I had a female working here, their their pants typically aren't. There's no way that DX is exactly. EX8000, optimal mobility and efficiency. Um, still has that 4G Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities and that front and rear facing camera. Um, just think efficiency and optimal mobility. Next, we will transfer over to and I'd previously mentioned it, more of our countertop payment device within the Axiom family, uh, the DX4000. So when I say DX4000, I, what I want you guys to think of is the Android sister product of the Desk 3500. I know 99.9% .9 of my ISOs, my agents, my customers know what a Desk 3500 is. Um, as I mentioned before, the, our Tetra line isn't going anywhere. We know how valuable that is. But what we wanted to do was provide our customers with an option to have a traditional countertop unit that still operates on the Android Axiom operating system. I get this question too. Andy, why would we need this? You said the DX8000 can, can move around. Um, simple enough. I know for a fact from personal experience, if I was to walk into a merchant with my grandmother and they handed her a DX8000 or EX6000 that wasn't plugged into anything, wasn't sitting on a countertop, she would probably have there. Um, she wouldn't think it was safe, even though we all know it is, just because it's different times. This DX4000 provides that consistent checkout experience for somebody that may want the flexibility of Android, um, but doesn't need all the other bells and whistles. One thing I really like to point out with this DX4000 is it is portable. I mentioned it is designed to be hardwired. You can see the wire on the right hand side. It is designed to be hooked into uh through usb or power over ethernet or however you guys want to do it um but i have had a customer this uh, does have a battery backup who's utilized the wi-fi capabilities they've taken payment they've unplugged the device they've moved it across the store so maybe in that one out of every hundred transactions where it needs to be unplugged they're still able to provide that support to their customer which i think is really cool now, I also get this, Andy, yep, that's cool. Um, I operate an ISO out of New York City where every single convenience store has a piece of plexiglass or Chicago has a plexiglass between the consumer and the merchant. No problem. Um, what we have came out with this is a DES 1700. Um, the DES 1700 is designed to be paired with the DX 4000 to make sure that that no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the barriers are, uh, we're able to service that client and create the best checkout experience possible. Uh, the DES 1700, as you can see on the left-hand side, is simply put a payment companion to the DX4000. Next, we will transfer over kind of to those uh, high-end, or not high-end, high-volume uh, enterprise hotel and retailer devices that so, we already went Andy, over. On the D, uh, Andy, on the DXs, the companion mm -hmm. pin pad is a what? Uh, is desk that all, all DXs? The desk 1700 is just the companion for the DX 4000. Okay. So if you're looking uh, for an external pin pad for the DX 4000, that would be it. Um, the reason for that being with the DX 8000, um, it's got that mobility with the 4G. Um, you can kind of you 
he would really just pass it around. But in an instance where um, maybe that plexiglass was a barrier, the DX4000 with the companion uh, DES 1700 would be the best option. And it, does the 8000 have a companion? It does not currently, no. Okay. Got it. All right. Thanks. Yep. No worries. Uh, so now we will make our way, like I said, over more towards this multi lane series. So I went over Tetra with you guys, right? We went over the lane 7000s, the lane 3600, stuff you would see in your, uh, your Marriott, your Hilton's, your Home Depot's, your Targets. Uh, as I mentioned, we're not oblivious to the fact that those devices are very useful for those customers today. So what did we do? We took those form factors. We juiced them up a little bit, made them a little bit more modern looking, and we kind of shifted those over to a sister products within the Axiom range. Uh, those include the RX 5000, which you can see here, the RX 7000, which we'll go over next, and the RX 9000. Our RX 5000, excuse me, is very, very similar to the Lane 3000s and Lane 3600s you guys see today. Not much different looking. What What's the difference here? They operate under that Android Axiom operating system. So if you have a customer, or if, if one of you guys were wanting to go with the Axiom range, but you do have customers in need of the Lane product, this would be your way to go. Um, these will be the devices that you guys soon see in your Home Depots, your Targets, your Hiltons, your Marriott's, so just keep that in mind. Uh, RX 5000, as compared to the other two we're about to go over, same kind of operating functionality main difference is going to be efficiency of space and to be completely honest with you cost point um say you have a smaller enterprise retailer but they don't they don't want to spend all that comes with the rx 7000 but they need the functionality or maybe maybe uh countertop space is of premium uh, the rx 5000 would be what they would want to go with the RX 7000, again, very, very similar to what we kind of already went over in terms of our Tetris series, the Lane 7000. Um, very, very similar in form factor. This is what you're going to see at those enterprise level retailers, right? Bigger screen allows for better interaction at the, ter at the point of checkout, giving that customer a better experience. A lot of times what you'll see on, on this bigger screen is going to be stuff like customer surveys, uh, advertisements, um, really whatever you you guys would want to put on there to make that experience the best thing possible for you guys as customers. And last, this one is currently in development for us, uh, RX 9000. I think it's a really, really cool device, very modern looking as compared to the other ones, but still kind of fits in that multi-lane fixed checkout experience. Uh, but this one's going to be our in-store tablet form factor. Um, I'm sure you've seen it with some of our competitors with the ability to kind of flip the screen front and back compared to consumer to merchant. Um, really, really cool stuff there. Um, really something that we're looking forward to bring to you guys soon. Uh, probably towards the middle of the year, you guys should see this available. As compared to all these other ones, operating system is a little bit newer. Uh, Android 11 here. Cool, so now that we've kind of gone over traditional stuff, right? The traditional terminals, like I wanted to go over two different categories with you guys. Uh, card readers, some some mobility and portability and our self-service a little bit more. Um, as you know, and as I've mentioned before, the payment space is it's it's constantly changing. If we were to rely simply on having a terminal only solution, I mentioned Genico is around for may not be around much longer. Uh, so what have we done? Uh, and Genigo is taking the initiative to keep supporting things like our Link and Mobi series, which are our payment companions and our mobile solutions. Um, but about a year ago, I'm, I'm, if, if you guys need more information, I'm more than happy to provide it. Um, and Genico did acquire um, FOS. It's FOS by Ingenico. It's a soft pause solution or a tap on phone. Uh, when we did so, and we, we started talking to a lot of customers about it, a question or a comment came up of, wait, you guys sell hardware. And the answer is yes, we sell we sell terminals. This is a, com a competitor to your hardware. Yes, it is. Why would you do both? Well, again, at Ingenico, we wanna make sure that we have every single solution for you guys. So when you guys have a customer that comes to you and they need X, Y, or Z, I don't have to tell you, listen, I can provide X and Z, but oh, I don't have Y yet. We wanna make sure that we're grabbing all these solutions to make sure that when you guys come to us with a need, uh, we're able to take care of that need for you. Um, and soft pause is a great one. 
Um, I think we've all we're all aware tap on phones becoming a big thing. Um, from what we've gone over and what we've we've learned with soft pause, it's it's first in its class. Uh, and I'm more than happy to kind of dive into that on a deeper level with you guys. If if, if you have questions, let me know. Next, I mentioned before self service service over the last few years has really been a booming business. Uh, I mentioned before we have everywhere from a self 2000 all the way up to a self 8000. Those differing form factors are made to service differing units. Some just have contactless, some have touch screens with pin pads, some just have touch screens, some have additional readers on the side. We really go all out to make sure that no matter what that need is, there's not one device that, that can't solve it. Um, and like I mentioned, Q3 of this year, Axiom uh, self-service, really, really exciting for us. Uh, we have that coming as well. So we'll have Tetra and Axiom operating self-service. And that's really what I had for you guys today. I think Adam and them had, had written out some questions that I'm, I'm more than happy to kind of go over with you guys. But um, I can't, again, I can't stress enough. I, I appreciate you guys kind of all taking your lunch time to kind of sit here and listen to our presentation. Um, I hope you guys did find some benefit to it. Uh, again, we are at every single trade show I think you could you could possibly imagine. If you haven't had the chance to meet me, and I know Tim got on for about two seconds to save me from my credit Wi-Fi, so I apologize. Um, but please find us at our booth. Send me an email. Send me a call. Send me a. Uh, we are more than happy to to talk with you guys. Uh, see about your needs. See what we can do to better support you guys. Because let's be honest, without you guys, uh, Tim and I wouldn't be here today. So I so I I greatly appreciate you guys this time. Awesome, thank you. Um, that's really great. A um, couple of questions for you. Um, does the uh, Axiom integrating pro integration process apply to SMBs to adapt to the new solutions? And also, uh, what are the changing trends on those? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm glad you asked about SMBs, right, Adam? Because as I mentioned, Tim and I space is it's a different one, right? We deal with big acquirers, but we also deal with small to medium sized business partners. Um, with that being said, I think one thing that Ingenico did with our Axiom line that's that's really, really impresses, impressive is we have four to five different integration paths that a partner can take. Uh, we have integration paths where, where a partner could essentially take Axiom and do absolutely 100% every single thing themselves, write their own application and, and let it go. Um, which is great for some of those bigger acquirers, but maybe not great for some of those SMB partners. Uh, but we also have pre-existing applications within our Android ecosystem where a partner can take existing work uh, that Ingenico has done and kind of piggyback off of that to do their own integrations or certifications. So that's an op that's an option as well. Um, so we, ha we have that wide range, right, which I think is really impressive. We sit down with partners, whether they're large, whether they're small, whether they're medium businesses, and, and we really let that partner who's interested build their build their own path. In terms of trends, I think I mentioned it before. I think the entire industry is trending Android. Why is that the case? Well, I think you guys saw one. It's a it's a pretty impressive looking device, but two, the functionality and the software and the efficiency of it is just leaps and years about beyond what anyone has ever done in the past. It's giving merchants, it's giving agents, it's giving companies like DCC Supply uh, the ability to do some so much more. And, Quite frankly, guys, the ability to do whatever you guys want it to. Um, I have partners who write their own application and they they tell it to do absolutely anything they want to. And Noah Axiom will listen. It's that's why it's it's so great. It's a smart box that's going to listen to whatever that application does. Uh, so in terms of trends, I think that's definitely where where the industry is kind of heading. So if you have Tetra, should you be offering Axiom to the customers? Yeah, so as I mentioned, Tetra Tetra's not Wait, going besides anymore. just selling another device for for Ingenico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so. I think I think you can never offer your agents or your customers enough enough solutions, right? I think when it comes down to it, you don't want to be the company that when somebody comes to you and I are, I've already mentioned this and they say they need a certain something, you don't want to say you can provide 95% of what they need but not the other 5%. Now why is that? because that customer made it known that they need that 5%, they're going to go find it somewhere else. None of us want that. Um, you mentioned Tetra as compared to Axiom. I have customers still that sell both. 
Uh, they have customers with different needs. They have customers with different wants. Uh, I mentioned it before, Tetra's not going anywhere. Um, I'll be completely frank. If you were a company looking to grow, if you were a company that was looking to invest a little bit more, if you were looking for new developments, um, new technology, I would 110% push you towards Axiom as compared to Tetra. Um, but that's not to say Tetra is still not growing. We're not doing work on Tetra. Um, just like I mentioned, the uh, Axiom's it's, a, it's an impressive it's an impressive operating system. Um, it allows you guys to do so much more. But no, I would definitely offer both. Um, if you use Tetra now, please continue to do so. We'll continue to support you there. If you're looking to grow and do something new, um, I think Axiom would be a good start for you guys. So we've got the we have the the retailer offering the card brands. We're, they're offering EMV, NFC, all that. <laughs> what other we have line busting. We have kiosk. We have unattended. Yep. Um, are there any other components of the Ingenico line that are kind of um, pain points or interesting points that to help them in the seamless customer experience? I, I'm glad you mentioned it. Right. We we have our traditional hardware units. We have our unattended. We have our payment companions. We have our mobile units. Um, but I think a big one, as I mentioned, it, is soft pause. Okay. for a for for a company to take a payment directly on their own personal phone or their or their company phone um we've really seen a big movement with that which i'm glad we acquired that company about a year ago um so soft pauses is, is a good one like i said i mentioned before that we got some questions like oh why would you guys acquire something that basically says don't use our terminal but use this because we understand that there's different there's different needs right there's different variations that we need to provide for those customers to make sure that Again, we're not the one where a customer comes to us that they feel left out. Um, in terms of another innovation, I didn't really mention as I was going through that we're working on, a big thing that we've seen in the industry kind of over the last year or two is all-in-one full station POS systems. Um, that's something we've really kind of taken into heart at Ingenico, uh, something we're working on in our Axiom range in order to provide kind of that dual screen full service POS for something that you may see in like a restaurant industry. Um, to be frank, that's something we're, we're lacking on right now. Um, but as I mentioned in the beginning, we've able to, we've been able to meet with a lot of our bigger customers. Um, we've addressed that issue and something that I'm hoping that we'll be able to announce within this year, but I will definitely keep you guys updated on that. Now you do have, right. So you, you integrate with a lot of POS systems, um, mm -hmm. you know, and they're hardwired to them without a backplane. We see those all the time on the big, the big white ones. What are those? Yep. What are yep. those? What are those called? Mobis? I guess the whole thing's called a Mobi, right? The Mobi is the kind of a mobile unit. Yep. Just the mobile unit, right? Um. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, got it. And um. Uh. So you've got the the software, so you you can do that line busting. So let's say um you have an opportunity you know someone that's really interested in some kind of special integration what would be their someone's next step to contact you are they contacting you who do they speak to yeah absolutely so any needs wants anything that you guys need please reach out please reach out uh, me and my team are more than happy to service you in any way we possibly can in terms of um soft pause or moby we and even our self series um, we have designated teams that do work on those projects. Being said, I'm your I'm your guy. Tim and I are your guys. We're your focal points. If you come to us with any needs, wants, or any at all, um, if I can't help you or if I need to bring in an expert, we're more than happy to do so, and I can facilitate those conversations for you guys. No questions asked. Awesome. And one of the reasons that we came up with this this format was a lot of people don't go to the shows. You know, mm -hmm. and so we really need to say, hey, what what what's at the show? What can we pre present to them? Because everyone gets busy working in their business and not working on the business, right? And so, yep. Yep. you know, this is a really great opportunity to do that and just to take a little time out to present it. I, um, I agree. Yeah, it's been it's it's been awesome, and I know I can speak on behalf of the entire Ingenica team, our marketing team, and saying thank you guys for having us. Um, super excited to be able to talk to almost like I said, almost all hundred of you guys. Really impressive crowd that you guys brought out. Um, I'm more than happy to kind of send you guys and Adam and, and Leslie, you guys have my contact information. I'm more than happy to send that out to you guys. For those of you that need to reach out, you do have questions or maybe need yeah, to set we'll, up an additional call we'll get, or even, we'll get need that a, even something as neat as 
Yep, or even as something as simple as needing needing more product information, right? There's always so much more than than just a, a screen or two that we can go over. So yeah, absolutely anything you guys need, please feel free to come to me. We'll make sure you guys are taken care of. Awesome, thanks. So I'm going to segue here to uh, a little bit of the Genico products that we have here. Um, just a little bit of a show and tell I have set up on my desk. Um, if you have any other questions while cool. any still sitting here, throw them into the chat. Um, so right, basically on my desk, I've got um, lots of different stands here. I got my display here, make it look better. But um, so basically I've got on my desk here, I've got the, the link uh this is the uh, lane 3600 and most of these lanes have a uh, back pl uh, component piece here which we call the rabbit and that rabbit's what was designed to go to a um and we have this design stand so this is our that was starting from a stands perspective i'm going to focus on stands um bring it down here so you can see so this is your lane 3000 stand and it clicks onto here um you got to kind of force it in. And then you've got your lane 3000 stand. This is what we call our fixed stand as a glue pad screws down. Um, and so it's really it's a lower cost $39 stand just for the device what comes with a glue pad or screws down. So the same concept can be brought into a swivel stand. Um, so then we've got a swivel stand here. This is the DX 8000. Um, so swivel stand, customer facing, merchant merchant facing, customer facing, um, squeezes into the device. This particular device doesn't have any locking spots on the back, but it does have something um, called a security hole. Know, where's the thing here? There we go. There's a, cousin, a security hole here, um, which you guys might see on your laptops, and we can't. We have a special tether that connects from that to the device itself to here. There's a little hole or it can go through the device and we have a hidden hole inside on this side here. Um, right here and then so you don't see the cables and then cable management goes through the whole device uh, customer facing and uh, with a hand grip. Now um, for some states like California, we're starting to do some uh, ADA compliance issues and ADA compliance issues are talk about um, being able to do it yourself. So here's your ADA version in which the um, the customer will be able to pull down and get the product themselves um, and with a cable management system on the side and then pull it back. And so this is available for any uh, stand, uh, swivel, same type of thing. So it just reaches out. So from that same perspective, we have a product um, it's kind of a show and tell. It's kind of fun. It's like sixth grade. It's great. Um, well, fourth grade. Um, and so here's our drive through. We were designing our drive through mounts uh, the beginning of 2020 and March 2020. Some crazy stuff happened and everyone needed the drive through mount. So this is our third version. It's now uh, takes our swivel into play. So now it tilts. So every device works with. So you have to order in which one you want. But this piece can be changed for each device terminal. So they can buy this back place, this piece here, and then uh, it can be swapped out. And so here you've got an eight inch pole. We also have a, uh, a, a 15 inch pole. So great for a drive through. It, it tilts towards the customer, which is really, really the key. The first versions were all flat and they couldn't see it. And so they're holding it way down like this. It was really weird. So, um, so now it tilts and so they can see the screen as well. And uh it's great for uh really the conversation is about tips right so even at drive through can you get a tip from here um and getting the the, the dip so that's our drive through um option then we have um back to these stands here now we have this for most and every genico product and if we don't let us know which one you're deploying and we'll have it made um so on this one, we have, uh, this is your regular size. We have the taller one, and then we have a, an even smaller one, which is not on my desk. Um, we have it in black and we have it in white. Um, and then each of these are glued down or screwed down, but then we have what we call our freestanding plates. And then the freestanding plate is, comes in four variations. You have your white, 
uh, screws right onto here and you're good to go. Clearly not going to do mix match, which is what we call our cow concept. Um, so here's your black and it's a freestanding, you know, your classic uh, jewelry store um, has the little rubber pads, you know, they or a marble countertop. They don't want um, they don't want anything to go or can't go into the, the table. So they need something that'll that'll be nice and smooth. And this is perfect for that. And it looks good. And then we have the same version in round. So all those are options. Oh, here's the small one. Small one. You can see the difference in size. Um, it's about an inch and a half difference. So it all depends on what the product is and how you want to work it. Another good seller for us, actually one of our top selling products, is our vest mount. This vest mount, this connects to the back of a monitor, brings the device next to the monitor, and then connects to here. Um, so you've got your monitor sitting here, and we have a 15 inch to 17 inch version, and you can move it back and forth, or we have a 19, a lot, much longer one. Um, this is amazing because during, um, especially during COVID or even before, well, we had this way before COVID, um, was cleaning crew comes around and they're spraying everything on the counter and they're spraying the device. Well, spraying the device, we know water or whatever gets in here and it gets rusted, corroded or whatever, and it starts to go tampered bad. So you want to get it off the counter so it doesn't get leaked on or whatever. You want to bring it up off the counter. So anytime you're at a restaurant, you're somewhere, and you see a device on a counter, you go, no, that's horrible. Horrible idea. Say, listen, I can get you this device. I can get you a stand and bring it up off the counter, right? Talking about touch points going into going into customers, you know, it's not always about price, right? So if you want to go, oh, you you want to you want to find something else to get in there about which isn't just price, we talk about some other way to help a customer, whether it be a printer or uh, a pain solution or whatever it is. In addition, um, so yes, so that's that's a VESA. We have that that could be bounced left side or right side, um, and we have um, much many different versions. Ones for Wallaby, ones for kiosks. We have kiosk mounts. So those are our fun stands. Other devices, especially for Ingenico, here's the Move 5000 carrying case. Comes with a nice long strap. Uh, has a protective shield here. A lot of people don't like the protective shield because um, it's nice, but it doesn't have as, as quick as a reaction. Um, and so they will, it'll still work, but they just cut out the screen. So then we designed, um, this here is a, a, a hip belt or shoulder strap and it carries your device. So grab me grab here, the DX8000. Now these are all our brand made for us. Um, so here's your classic carrying case. It has two straps, so you can un unhook it. Also has a, a belt loop here, um, or not a belt loop, but a, a whatever you call that, and a couple pen holes and a weep hole. But uh, this is what we call our universal. Uh, it's on our site. I love this product. It can work either way. And so even if you have one of these and you have a silicon cover so let's say for the move 5000 we have a silicon cover and you can put the silicon cover on it and then here to protect the device the really the key here is about uptime right uptime what's what's our backup plan right we want to make sure that it's up and running um so and also the silicon we have a new silicon case for this that'll be here in about a week for the dx 8000 and you can charge it while it's on the base while it has a silicon case so this this one i'm uh, I love this one actually came up from my inability to offer a product to anyone that had toast. So what can I offer them? Well, maybe I can sell them some universal cases and or clove or, or square. Right. And so this came from that. And so if you wanted to and you had a good opportunity, you could also have it logoed. Uh, I think it's about uh, two dollars a piece to add the logo. Um, and. I got a couple samples made. Um, so that, those are fun. Um, and then let's talk about those crazy situations where it's on a mountain, it's on a, it's on a wall, it's here, it's there. I have no idea where, you know, the, it, it's a really weird spot. We have solutions. We have created back of the, back of the uh, headrest in a cab. We have 
poles that bend in really weird positions that can hook to our devices. So when you're in a place and you're looking for a solution for the customer, um, it may not be there off the shelf. We can get it created for you. Very, We can do very small lots. And so it's uh, super easy to build some of this stuff for us. Um, so uh, that's really it for me. Uh, let me see if there's anything else here. Oh, I have one more. Here's a full white one here, a uh, pretty white one. Um, this one happens to be for the Clover Mini. Um, but we have stands for Verifone, Genico, First Data, Castles, Deja Vu, Packs, all of them. Um, but uh, and so we we carry it all in stock. And so let us know if you need anything. Finally, we um, this was our bread and butter during COVID, but we're still carrying them, and they're still relevant. Spill covers. Um, so I think this is the move spill cover. Uh, and why are they still doing it? Because these were never for the for the people. They were always for the device to protect the device. And so. Um, that's really the key here is to is um that is protecting the device and so we don't want it to tamper we don't want it to get wet we don't want it to get dirty and if it's your product and you're giving it out or whatever and you're not selling it then you really want to protect it um if you're buying the device with us these are 12 otherwise they're 14.95 um and they're still being deployed by those that bought them during covid they're still making those orders because they still see the need for it whether it be costco or um or trader joe's um, you'll still see those uh, out there in the market. So that's about it for me. Uh, any other questions? I'll sit around for a little bit. Otherwise, I appreciate everyone coming on and uh, uh, have a good day. Um, talk to you later. Go play some pickle. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Yep. See you next yep. month. Thank, thanks all for your attention. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. Bye. Mm -hmm.